All right, today I want to share a message that's been on my heart uh, that I believe is going to probably turn into a little bit of a series, but it's, uh, the title of it is, They Keep on Hurting Me. They Keep on Hurting Me. And basically what this is about is how to deal with or, or handle or repel offenses because uh, so many people feel like the whole world's out to get them. Uh, now, that's the way I feel when I drive. That's a healthy thing. Like the whole world's about to get you. I mean, if you drive that way, you probably avoid a lot of accidents because how I many of you know some crazy people out there driving? So I'm just thinking every time I'm out there, they're all trying to hit me. They're all trying to hit me, you know? So I try to be careful. But when it comes to real living, when it comes to people, you know, everybody's not out to get you. How many of y'all know that's the case? Everybody's not out to get you. But some of us have been hurt in the past, have been damaged, wounded. We many times feel like uh, a person is against us until proven otherwise. And according to the Bible, we're supposed to believe the best in someone in pro in, until proven otherwise. Are you hearing me? So that tells us that we've got to adjust some things in our own heart when it comes to, um, you know, giving people a chance. But, you know, we all get hurt. We all get offended. And, uh, you know, there are so many ways that we have opportunities to be offended. And I think uh, we as Christian people think that it's not such a big deal as it really is a big deal. Because it is a big deal to God when we're continually getting offended. Any offense matters to God because he wants us to handle it in a biblical way. You see, um, we, got, we got people in this country that get aggravated about a lot of things. And we as Christians you know, need to, to be careful that we don't handle offenses like the world does. You know, uh, first of all, I really believe that that to have an offense is kind of like having a hangnail. Have you all ever had a hangnail, you know, in, in, on your fingernail or even on your toenail, you may have it like that. It, and, if you, and, it, and what happens is at first you think, well, it's not such a big deal. And, you know, as time goes on, what, what happens, it doesn't get better. And then uh, it gets worse. And uh, it's hard to believe that something so little can hurt so badly. And uh, I believe an offense is like a spiritual hangnail. That if not addressed, it gets worse. It gets all festered up. It becomes a bigger problem. It becomes uh, an irritation in your spirit. And it grows into something more painful. Now, I know you all agree that if you just avoid a problem, it doesn't usually get better. That you have to give attention to it. Amen? But whenever we're offended, most people don't see it. At least not the beginning stages. We do a pretty good job of covering up our hurts. So we go on and suck it up and Many times let it fester, and without really being honest with ourselves and honest with God to deal with it, it becomes a bigger problem. All right, so you can be offended at people. You can be offended at God. There are people that are offended at God because things didn't turn out the way they thought it was going to be turning out. And you know, there's some wonderful Christian people that have just a little boiling disturbance inside of them in their spirit, a little glitch because they're a little bit ticked off about somebody. And these things, the Lord wants us to look deep within our hearts to see whether they be so. Be honest and real about yourself. And let's evaluate as the Spirit of God shines His light through His Word today. So let's just pray. Lord, we welcome you to speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, we open our hearts for you to deal with us. We know that you're not condemning, but you're liberating. And Lord, we ask you to right now move upon our hearts. We give you permission to shine your spotlight into areas in which many times we have not been honest in days past. Lord, today we want to be real and we want your word to change us and transform us in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. There are those that are really upset because things don't turn out the way they think it should and they tend to blame God for their disappointments. Let's be careful that we don't blame God for anything. You know, I've discovered that it's not a good idea to blame God for anything that goes wrong. Because, you know, if things don't turn out the way you think they ought to turn out, then know that God's a good God. Amen. And he, has a, he is very capable of working things out for your good, even if it doesn't look like it's what you want right now. How many of y'all didn't get what you, what you wanted, but yet... A little bit later, you got something better because God showed you, I've got a higher way, a better way. And that's why we got to trust him and not be offended at God because our offense toward God can even 
uh, sabotage our own future from keeping us to getting that which is better. Because as long as, you're, listen, as long as your attitude is good and you keep your connection with God, then God will then turn things to your good, even if it doesn't look bright right now. Amen? You know, people are offended in this world. We've got that on the screen. You know, there's so many people who are offended today. There are people who are offended at the Bible. People that are offended at public prayer. I've never heard of so many people that are offended at public prayer as they are right now. And uh, at, at first, when you prayed in a public prayer, like a public school graduation, it's okay to pray, but don't say at the end, in Jesus' name. You know? But now they don't even want that. They don't want a prayer at all. How many of y'all know it's the name that offends people? Jesus even said, I am a rock of offense to some people because they don't want to do what he says. See what I mean? Because they don't want to cooperate with what he desires of us or ask us to change or to become or to do. Some people are just offended when they see a Ten Commandments on the wall. When you walk into our educational wing, you know, we, we've had that Ten Commandments up. We've got to get that Ten Commandments in place again because we want it to be able to be a ministry in which when they walk in, they know we're not ashamed of the commandments of God. You see? So there are people that are like that. And, um, and it offends them. And the only reason why a person would be offended with Jesus, he's perfect, is simply because they don't want to do what he's asking them to do. So they resist. You know, let's talk today about some ways that we tend to be offended as Christians. Some ways that we tend to be offended. All right? We can get offended by our government and get a chip on his shoulder and have a, uh, what do you say, a continual like discouragement with a sour attitude about what's going on in our country and not really focus on anything that's good. That's why I'm very careful, though I want to be uh, open to the fact that things aren't going as well as I believe it should go, that things, many things go wrong, many things need to change. I try not to focus on that so much that I get discouraged about our nation. Does anybody understand where I'm coming from? Do you feel that way? Yeah. All right, because there are some good things going on. And we need to think about the good and not be overwhelmed by continually being bombarded with all the negative all the time. And when you know you're getting discouraged, that tells you right there you're looking at the negative a little bit too much. We need to go ahead and switch our attention to some things that are positive. Uh, there are some people that send me email about all kinds of things that are going wrong in our government and our nation. And after a while, I just don't look at all of them. I'm just going to be honest. Uh, but I'll just go ahead and pray and say, Lord, I can't do a thing about it, but you can. So I'm asking you, Lord, to move on behalf of our country. And we need a Holy Ghost, heaven sense, devil chasing revival. So, Lord, I ask you to pour it out. I'm ready to, for you to use me. I'm willing to do my part. I will do my part. But, you know, when it comes to making a change right now and a difference, that's what I'm called to do. That's what you're called to do. And that's what we should be uh, doing on a regular basis. Amen. All right. Th also, you can be offended by going shopping. You can go to a store or somebody rub you wrong. A clerk that didn't quite answer your question or acted a little bit hateful, you know. Have any of you ever had anybody that just waited on you, just looked like they didn't care about you? You know what I mean? Look like, I feel like saying to some of them, you know, you need to get a life or get another job because this don't work for you, you know. But I just hold it in and go on because I figured, you know, their boss will find out soon enough and they'll be out of there. Sure enough, next time you go to the store, they're nowhere to be found. You know what I mean? But people can offend you in the store. I mean, even a manager cannot solve a problem the way you want it to be solved. And, you know, you can have a bad experience shopping and going to a store. And, you know, when that happens, you don't need for several months. Every time you drive past that business, well, I don't like them. You know, and relive all the hurt again that took place at that store. You know, that's called carrying your offenses. And, and, and to, to live like that is not God's style and way for his people to live. We got to get over that stuff. I mean, just turn it over to God. You know, say, Lord, I forgive them and I leave it at that. Amen. I mean, you can be offended by road rage these days. People know sign language that I can't even interpret, you know? I mean, they say stuff to me that uh, I don't even know what they're saying, you know? But, uh, we, you know, nobody's perfect on the highway. And, you know, a lot of times when they're the ones giving the bad rage, it's really their fault. People swerve around you real fast, pass you up real fast, only for you to wave at them at the stoplight just a little ways ahead. I mean, they can't go any faster than where they want to go because, you know, they're, you know, they're just impatient, and you can't be offended by others' impatience. There's going to be crazier people in this world as more time goes on. Uh, getting away from God, not having patience, we need to show them something different. Did you hear what I just said? Don't get involved in all that stuff. All it is is an invitation of the enemy for you to act just like them. 
And the Bible says in Proverbs, do not answer a fool according to his folly. In other words, don't stoop to their level to act like they do when they're showing out and showing off. See what I mean? Show them something different. Show them Jesus. Also, you can be offended by high prices. How many of you ever just get so upset because the price of gas went up? Just, <clears throat> you know, try to blame it on the congressmen, the senators, the, the Arabs, you know? That guy out there in Venezuela, this kind of a crazy dictator, you know, blaming on Obama, blaming on everybody, blaming on the gas station. You know, I don't know who you blame. Somebody. They make it so complicated, you don't know who's really the fault. You know, then you blame them. Look at all the taxes they put on the gas. You know, and just be, you can get your nose out of joint and be a sour puss kind of person through life because you allow these little things to build up inside of you. This is a problem, that's a problem. Before you know it, your mind is filled with that stuff and your spirit reflects it. Uh, you can get offended at yourself. You can be disappointed in yourself, decisions you made, and be offended at yourself. You can be offended at the truth. You can be offended at God's word. And here's a big one. If you, if you get offended by the word, you're also offended by the messenger. <laughs> you know? Here I am just delivering the message because I'm just showing you what the word says. Don't get mad at me. Moses had trouble with this one day. He went to God. And he said, Lord, they're just res resisting me. He said, they're not resisting you. They're resisting me. So I try to just let it just go off of me and back on to God because, you know, if my attitude's sour and I'm not delivering the word right and I'm being mean about it and, you know, and I'm not teaching the truth, that's another thing. But if I'm doing right and presenting it in a, in a way that, you know, is godly, I believe it shouldn't be my fault. Amen. You know, there are people that are offended when they hear a minister preach about a certain thing they need to change in their life. A, a biblical message on giving offends some people simply because they don't want to give. By the way, anybody who wants to talk about, you know, they talk about giving in that church. By the way, every church talks about giving. Amen. Why? Because it's part of our life. But anybody who complains about us talking about giving have identified themselves as a greedy person who don't want to give. You see what I mean? So we know exactly where they are. They're not tithing. They don't want to tithe. They're mad when they hear about it because they don't want to give up their money. Say, so, well, you shouldn't talk about money. Well, that's all I'm going to say today. Amen. Some people... Uh, uh, are just needing to forgive others because they're offended about so many things. Matthew chapter 24, look at verse 10. Let's look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. Remember in this passage and also in the whole chapter of 24, Jesus is talking about end time events. What can we expect to see happen in the very last days prior to his return? So you'll read verse 10. It says, and then shall many be offended. Everybody say that. And then shall many be offended. And then what? Many. Many. Many people shall be offended, in other words. So what is this saying? This is an end time message, by the way. We're talking about end time things that are happening right now. And I just want to share, Jesus is speaking of these things that will come. So let's look at the word offended. What does it mean? Offended in the Greek means to cause to stumble. To cause to stumble. The Greek word, scandalizo, it means to entrap. Entrap. Now, it's, it's basically referring to, listen to me, a trap that catches an animal. Some of y'all probably caught raccoons in a trap or a squirrel in a trap. I mean, I mean, if y'all got a trap, come out of my house and catch a few squirrels because they're trying to eat on my house. Dance around on the roof when I'm trying to pray, you know, stuff like that. I, like, I don't want to shoot them. I'd like to catch them and turn them loose somewhere else, you know. <laughs> if y'all like squirrels, I'll just turn them loose in your yard. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a trap. But in, listen, the word uh, here, offend, is the Greek word that actually means the bait that's inside of the trap that lures the animal. The bait that's inside. So Satan uses offenses as bait to lure us into entrapments. And that's what an offense is. Let me just uh, get my stool back over here again. Right here. Let's just say here's an obstacle of life. There are many opportunities for us to bump into stuff as we experience life. We'll just, 
We're just walking along and look, you know, everything's going well and you run into a, an obstacle. Obstacles are all in the way of this journey. God's not going to remove all the obstacles just for you. He loves you, but this is just living. This is just life. So you don't need to think everybody's against you or obstacles are just coming against you or the devil's got a personal vendetta against you. No, this is just what life is like. And we have to learn how to maneuver around and navigate around these type of obstacles in our life by the Spirit of God and by the Word of the Lord. Listen up. Satan has a definite purpose for every obstacle. He wants you to stumble. And here's how it works. Everybody listen. You get right with God. You go to church. You're growing in the things of God. Things start to get better. And all of a sudden, you get mad at somebody. And when that happens, you get upset at something that was preached. You're bothered because you're, at, you're not asked to sing a solo. You're aggravated by something that didn't go the way you think it should have gone. So you get off track. You're mad. You're bothered. And you're tempted not to go back. And that's the way offenses work. What's really being said here by Jesus is, since offenses have always been and always will be, in the last days, there's going to be a greater attack and temptation to be offended than any other time in history. Are you hearing me? The world is going to get more offended about every little thing. And if you don't watch it, it's going to spill over into your life if you're not aware that this is the end time event that's supposed to take place among the world, it can also get into the church. Listen to me. The more selfish people get, the more easily they are to be offended. And since in the last days, there's going to be a, a, I mean a, a hypo-selfishness going on to fulfill whatever I want, everything revolves around me, and they're starting churches where everything caters around the individual, and there's no confrontation, and everything is seeker-friendly to the point that there's no real life change. Because they don't want to offend people, and the reason for this is because selfishness has heightened to such a point already that now we don't want to do anything confrontational. Let's just give them free waters and free donuts and free coffees, and don't even mention they've got to give anything, and there's a few millionaires that's footing the bill. What is that? What good is that going to do? Keeping everybody in their bassinets, here in the sermonettes, but there's no change. We don't want to fall into that trap. Let's look at the word offended another way. The word offended can be divided off into two words. Off-ended. You're on your way to things getting better in your life. You're growing and becoming, and you are offended and you allow yourself to get off the track that you're on, and you have ended your progress that you were experiencing. You are off-ended. Off-ended. The devil loves to knock you off track and end your journey of progress and maturity. He likes to steal your joy. He likes you to be upset. He wants you to be bothered by things. He wants you to be irritated by the little things that really should not matter. Harboring offenses is a serious thing. It's a serious thing in God's word because he wants us to be free inside. He wants us to keep our joy. He wants relationships to be right with everybody. You know, we cannot afford to allow offenses to irritate us like a hangnail. Entertaining offenses is not making the other person pay for the wrong against you anyway. You, what does it really, who does it really hurt? Offenses hurt you. Offenses hurt you. They hurt me. I can't get even by some, to, you know, to, with someone. I can't get even with them by carrying an offense in my heart because they go on all being happy. 
By the way, many times when people offend you, they didn't even mean to. It's something in our childhood that pushes a button of some kind of reminder that's linked into our subconscious of something that happened that associates ourselves with something that took place in the past. And those same emotions come back up again. And many times we don't even know why it offended us. Amazing. When are we ever going to stop doing the things that, that never do us any good? We need to just stop and refuse those offenses and begin to address them and say, Lord, where does this come from? Sometimes we know that person didn't even mean to offend us, but we are offended. We need to say, Lord, where is this coming from? Will you heal me? Will you show me where this is coming from and heal me? And sometimes he'll take you to a memory of your past, something that happened in your childhood, and you can face off the enemy there with Jesus showing up. Is anybody hearing me? Hallelujah. Offenses have always been around. But it says in Matthew 24, 10, it says, many shall be offended. We need to be seriously aware of the temptation to be offended. Tempted, that's right, it's a temptation. We are tempted to be offended, but it doesn't mean we have to be. The enemy can keep us all mad at each other and divided, and he can accomplish his plan and weaken the body, lessen our effectiveness as Christians, and make us personally miserable at the same time. Matthew chapter 24, look at verse 12, just another verse is so down. It says, and the love of many shall wax or grow cold. This is referring to Christians. This isn't talking about the world is supposed to be all offended and all sensitive and all selfish and every little thing bothers them. And if you don't handle me just right with white kid gloves, I'm not going to be your friend. I'm not going to come no more. Forget you. This is talking about Christians. Christian, it says, and many shall wax or grow cold. And people tend to withdraw and disconnect and not care about anybody but themselves and lose their love for people when they are offended. An offense starts off being a little something, then another little something, then another little something, until we think, hey, I got, I got the power over this. I don't think it will affect me. But then it starts to affect you. If you don't deal with an offense, then what happens is it grows bigger and your lo love gets colder and colder toward people. If the hangnail is not addressed, every little thing that touches you will irritate you and hurt you. And eventually, you will get all festered up within and start even hating people. Did you hear what I just said? That's how many people get to the place where they actually hate people. And we know that's wrong. But how far will we let something go before we get honest with ourselves and stop it? And stop the devil in his maneuvers. We need to be very aware of the little offenses and deal with them in our heart and just let it go. Everybody say, just let it go. Let me ask you the question. What's the best time to deal with a problem? Right. Right when it's a little problem at the very beginning. At the very beginning. That's when we need to deal with it. Have you ever heard it before? It got to nip it in the bud. I don't know quite what that comes from, nip it in the bud, but it means let's take care of it. At the very beginning, let's just... Deal with it, in other words. Let's don't let it become something big where the devil can use. There have been so many churches that have been divided, people that come and go, and there's some churches where their door is like a revolving door because there's so many people that get offended by every little thing. And we need to be committed to one another and stay committed for the long haul and not let offenses get in to divide us. The best time to forgive someone is the moment that you begin to feel the offense. The moment you begin to feel it, as soon as you feel it in your spirit, the twist in your heart, that thing that you know that something's not right, and we, you know, if not, and you know, it could, that hurt could even get worse after it's all festered up and infected, and it will really hurt to get that hangnail fixed then when it's really sore and festered up, right? So don't give the devil any time to allow any bad seed to take root and fester up in your life. We need to resist the devil at, ev at the very beginning of the temptation to even receive an offense. But we got to be aware of offenses, understand the danger of them, 
so we can then be uh, uh, able to catch it right in the beginning stages. In the last days, people will retreat into their own little, wor little worlds. They'll, they'll get to a place where they don't care about other people. They'll not love others because of the iniquity or the lawlessness in our land. Did you hear me? So don't be shocked when this begins to happen to you because more and more people will act ugly toward those who take a stand for Jesus and you don't need to allow that to get in your heart. Actually, to not allow an offense when it was directly aimed at you in hopes that you would will actually prove to people that what you have is the real thing. To more apt to listen to your life's message when you begin to share your faith because they know you should have been offended but you just didn't take that opportunity. Amen? I tell you what, it's a freeing thing to know you're not having any unforgiveness toward people, that you don't have a, a craw to pick with somebody, or you're not mad with a person, and you, everything is clear between you and God. It's such a wonderful thing to live your life that way. That's God's intention, by the way, for you to live a life of freedom. The highest level of spiritual maturity, according to Jesus, is to consistently love people. Love people consistently. Love them deeply. Love them unconditionally. Even when they do not deserve it. This is the charge of Jesus to all of us. Anybody can love their enemies, he said. But it takes the love of Jesus to love someone who is mean to them. That does them wrong, mistreats them. You can do this by the grace of God. The less we allow ourselves to be offended, the better our lives will become. The less the devil will have authority and a foothold in our lives... And the more love and joy and peace that we're going to have. Why? Because it's just simply not worth being offended. Can somebody say amen? amen. Proverbs 4.23. It says, keep or guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. It's important that we guard our hearts to make sure these ugly things do not take root within us. I've discovered that the deeper you love people, the harder it is to be offended. It's true. The deeper you love people, the harder it is to be offended. I've many times, somebody meant to offend me, but I didn't even get it. My wife would tell me later, do you know what they were really trying to say to you and do to you when they did that? I said, oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. I love them. I didn't, I didn't get it. And maybe somebody else would point that out to you. And sometimes it's happened to her. And I said, you know what? I think they really meant to do you a jab right there. Well, that's all right. We just got to let it go. We just got to let it go. And I think if we would work harder at falling in love with people more, I think we won't have an opportunity to accept a temptation to be offended. Amen? We have occasions to be offended by our spouses every day. And the more you love your spouse, the harder it's going to be for you to be offended by them. You know, we say a lot of times, you offended me. Are you ready to go on a journey where you can think a little bit deeper with me? Come on. Hold on right here. I want to make this statement. Nobody can offend you. Come on and hold on with me. People can do certain things, and it's your choice, like what you said, of how you're going to react or respond to them. Listen, Jesus was mistreated on his way to the cross and while he was on the cross. But do you really think he was offended? If he, would, if he was offended, he wouldn't have been able to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He knew he, knew he had a choice. Amen. They did all kinds of other things to him. They poked him, beat him, put a crown of thorns on his head, nailed him to a cross, all that stuff. He simply chose well. And he's teaching us through that whole situation, through his life, that's the way I want you to respond. And nobody's been treated like that yet. None of us have. And if we're going to get, get offended because somebody gave you a bad sign language on the highway, <laughs> somebody gave you a certain look at church that you didn't like, your boss kind of reprimanded you a little bit because you did something a little bit wrong or something not quite to what he thought it should be, how are you going to handle the persecutions that may come to you that's much more severe than this? We've got to let go of the little stuff. And some of us are walking around with chips on our shoulder. Huh. Every little thing, it's like when you come to church, 
I want to see who's going to mess with me today. When you go to work, who's going to mess with me today? I want you to look at who can I be a blessing to today? Who can I love on today? And the more you do that, the less you're going to be on guard and hurt by every little thing. No, we make choices. To be offended is a choice. Just like any other temptation to sin is a choice. But there must be an awareness that this is what's going on in the spiritual realm so that we can see it, identify it at the very beginning stages, and nail it and say, it shall not have a foothold in my heart. Amen. In Psalm chapter 119, verse 165, it says, Great love have they which love thy law. That's God's word and his principles. And nothing shall offend them. Everybody say that. Nothing shall offend them. Say that again. Nothing shall offend them. That means when you fall in love with the law of God, the word of God and his principles, you will be fortified within to the point to where you're not going to be a person that's going to be offended. Nothing shall offend them. Wow. That tells me that God expects his people to be really strong. Strong to the point to where you can't be wavered by a little bit of conflict and you go away with hard feelings that continually reside in your heart towards someone else. Offenses can cause us to grow stronger. It can. Offenses can literally cause you to get stronger. You know, when there's a, a fruit tree that's put in the ground, it faces rainstorms, intense heat from the sun, all kinds of wind. But if that young tree could talk, it probably would say something like this. Get me out of here. Why? Because I'm being tossed by the wind. The sun is baking me. The torrential rain is washing me away. And if the garden, gardener would have listened to the voice of the tree, he would actually do it harm rather than good. Because trees endure hot sun and rainstorms by sending their roots down deeper into the ground. The adversity they face is eventually the source of great stability. So the more you can be offended and you can be like water off a duck's back, you know the duck has oil in his, in his skin and when he does his feathers and does like that, it stirs up the oil to run down on the feathers and the oil represents the Holy Ghost. So when the rain of adversity and waters come on him, you can't even tell a duck was even wet because oil doesn't mix with water and it just kind of goes right off the duck's back. Everybody say oil off, water off the duck's back. Say water off the duck's back. See, you've got to not be easily offended. The harshness of the elements surrounding the tree causes them to seek another source of life. So whenever there is harshness that you're faced with, you seek the source of your life, and that's God himself. And be at least open and honest and real enough with yourself and with God to admit that you are on the beginning stages of being offended and take it to him and say, Lord, here is my offense. I forgive so-and-so. Heal me of this. I don't want to go with this stuck as a crawl in my spirit. And these trees will one day come to the place that even the greatest windstorms and the harsh, harshest of sun will not affect them, but they will actually produce fruit. They will produce fruit. You want to produce fruit? Don't be offended by the, the difficulties and adversities of life, but let it be a part of what will cause you to seek your source of strength by letting your roots go down deeper. You see, it's easier just to walk away from a situation and not even come back. It is. It doesn't take any strength, virtue, character, integrity at all to just walk away when somebody bothers you, offends you, irritates you. But it takes some substance to withstand the pressure and the irritations and to deal with it in your own heart and then face off the issue. Everybody here, if you've been married for a while, you know you've been offended by your spouse. Right? You know, a lot of people don't need it, want to do what it takes to deal with the offense, so that's why they get apart from each other, you know, peacefully coexist if possible, and eventually, you know, they separate. But those of us who have been married for a while, we're still married. You do know the best part of being upset is making up. What happens when you work it through? When you work it through, if you have the virtue to do that, 
then what happens is you bridge over yourself to a stronger relationship than what you had before. Why? Because we've been through this together. We weathered the storm. Even though we disagreed and we had an argument or upset, hey, we're trying to do better and we hope that happens less and less, but you know what? We're going to forgive each other and love each other and choose not to be offended with one another. You actually have a stronger love. When you work it out in church, you're stronger with your relationship in church. When you work it out with your boss, you have a stronger relationship with your boss, which gives you a, a greater possibility of promotions and raises, which you believe in God for increase. Come on now. There have been too many people that left jobs that should not have left jobs simply because you got offended on the job. I know some people get mad and walk out, didn't even have a job to go to. And God just let them have a good spanking for several months, wondering how they're going to pay their bills because they just acted out of their flesh because they were offended. People leave churches like that. They're offended. They're bothered. They, just, they ain't going to try to work it out. They ain't going to talk to the person that offended them because they're chicken. Because they ain't going to try to work it out. It's just going to be easier to walk away. I want to challenge you, whenever we are offended or tempted to be offended with each other, don't just walk away. And for goodness sake, don't write me a Dear John letter and try to make it look like it's my fault. That's what they do to me all the time. I'm the scapegoat. The last letter I got, somebody left. My wife read it. My mom read it. and said, here it is, a long letter. So-and-so does offended. I said, okay. I didn't look at it. I just threw it in the trash can. I'm just tired of it. You know what I mean? Why, why do I need to deal with all the mess, you know? Let's just be real. We don't need to send emails to each other, fussing each other out of something that was done that hurt your feelings. Come on, let's get our heart right in the presence of God. I mean, aren't we getting real when we stand here and worship God together? Or are we just singing some songs? Or is our heart engaged when we pray? Or are we just going through the motions of some religious jargon? If it's real and he's real to us, then for God's sake, dealing with people should be handled in a way that's respectful. Because how we respond and act to people is the way we're really responding and acting to God. Because what you have done to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it to me. In other words, if you want to show God that you love him, then we've got to show people that we love them. Come on now, I said a mouthful right there. That's the truth. Amen. All right, so an offense is totally unproductive. An offense is totally unproductive. It doesn't do anything good. It doesn't produce anything good. It steals your peace, your joy, your power, even your health if you'll let it, and produces nothing that is good, nothing. So we need to be thoughtful and considerate of our words before we speak to make sure that we're not offending others. It doesn't just work with you repelling offenses with you. So I believe sowing and reaping works also with how you treat people. And it's important that if you don't want to constantly be bombarded with the temptation to be offended, then at least consider your words, like the Bible says, to season your words with salt, that you might know how to answer every man, which means every individual will need to be sensitive to the Spirit when we talk to them, that we uh, extract the right vocabulary out of our storehouse of words, that we would give them the right words that could not be misunderstood as something that would be offensive. Now, we can't always do that. There are times when in our best efforts, we're going to still get some people upset. But at least in our heart, we should show them that that wasn't our intention. Is everybody with me? Amen? Yeah. You know, the devil's doing everything he can to try to keep people apart, especially in the church. In these days, as we approach the return of Jesus Christ, God wants his people to get along and be in unity. Like a good father, any good father or a good mother, you're happy when all your children are getting along. You're bothered when they're not getting along. God wants all of his children to get along, to enjoy being together. In Psalm chapter 133, verse 1, it says, How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And then it goes on in the next part as it explains more how this works with the anointing pouring down off the head of Aaron and down his beard and his clothing. It says, There the Lord God commands the blessing. What do you mean there? The place of unity. The whole chapter is about unity, about enjoying being together, how great it is and how God enjoys it when we are happy being together and not an island unto ourselves, but we enjoy getting along with each other. This is part of our worship to God, showing that we're submitted to Him. It's part of showing Him that we're pleasing Him. Uh, this is what He wants. I cannot be angry at my wife in my house and come in here and be anointed. 
It don't work. I learned that a long time ago. <laughs> and you know what? You might say, well, that's okay for you because you're a pastor. You can't afford to. Well, you can't afford to either. I mean, you've got an anointing too. I mean, you've got to keep yourself straight. You can't be offended in, at, at your spouse and, and all the stuff that goes on in your life and who you work with because you need your anointing. You need an anointing on your job. You need an anointing for blessing. You need an anointing for even going shopping and having the right attitude. Even driving down the road, you need to have an anointing to be a good father or a good mother. An anointing to have a great marriage. To be able to be a good witness in our community. To do your ministry in the church and do it well with joy. You need an anointing to walk in the perfect will of God and fulfill your destiny. And you've got to keep your attitude right. The anointing upon our lives and the anointing upon the church is multiplied when we love each other, when we get along well, and we have complete unity. Everybody say unity. unity. Makes God glad. You know what? The truth is it makes you glad too. It makes you glad too. So it's a great feeling to be free and to walk in that freedom. An offense is a temptation and a choice. Remember that. It's a temptation and it's a choice. This is kind of a recap. I said an offense is a temptation and a choice. We can choose to accept that temptation just like we would any other sin. We choose it or refuse it. But it's up to us to refuse it. Just decide not to take it. Have you ever heard anybody say, don't take offense to that? Have you ever heard anybody say that? Because it's true. We choose to take it or not to take it. We have the opportunity to choose or refuse the temptation of offense. And when things hurt us, we have to deal with it quickly. Whenever we choose to stay offended, the Holy Spirit is grieved. The Spirit of God is grieved. The reason why God is bothered by you being offended is because it hurts you. It hurts you. It stifles your growth. It messes with your destiny. It causes you to be offended and lessens your victory personally. And I know at times it's not the easiest thing to do to release hurt and refuse to be offended. But we need to stop acting like this is just too hard. I can't do this. I don't know how come the Lord expects me to do this. I've even asked a few people from time to time when I find out where the source or the root of their problem is that they have unforgiveness toward their father or toward their mother, toward their brother or somebody else in their childhood. We said, you know, you just need to forgive right now. Would you forgive them? I've had some people say, no, I'm not ready for that. No, I'm not ready for that? That shows the degree of their submission to God. I'm not ready for that. Will you pray with me? Just repeat after me and for, let's forgive your brother for what he did to you. No, what he did was too bad. I can't forgive that. Nothing's too bad. Aren't you glad there's nothing too bad that you did for Jesus to forgive you of all of your stuff? Don't you know that it's not just all about you, but God has forgiven others too? Don't you know what the Word of God says about if you want to be forgiven, you must forgive others? We don't have a choice in the matter. If we forgive him, we got to forgive. And we got to prove to him that we appreciate that forgiveness by, by not even hesitating to forgive others and do it quickly. Are you listening? And some people carry on deep-rooted emotional upheaval and intensities of emotion throughout their entire lifetime because they just cannot let it go because it, it just was something too bad. Nothing's too bad for God to forgive. And nothing's too bad for you to forgive because that's the God who is in you. It takes the grace of God to forgive people. It takes the grace of God to just simply refuse to be offended. But you must be reminded that His grace is at work within you and access it. This is not too hard. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. Good sense makes a man restrain his anger. And it is his glory, in other words, it adds to his respect and honor, to overlook a transgression or an offense in the Amplified Bible. So to be able to overlook a transgression of another, to overlook an offense, will add to your respect 
as a person, that you're a quality person and not someone who can't get along with folks, who's dysfunctional, who's constantly bothered by everybody, who's totally involved with themselves and so selfish that everything bothers them. Everybody say, I got to get over myself to get free. Say, I got to get over myself to get free and to stay free. You know, there's a story of a man and his wife, and it seems that every time they were in the car together traveling, his wife would tell him every turn where to go, even in their own subdivision, how to get to their house. It got to the place to where it was such a horrible habit that the man was just nearly driven, driven crazy. You know, and they'd have many arguments because of it. And finally, one day, the man concluded that the Lord may be trying to teach him something. I mean, you know, when you can't change your spouse, it could be something that God wants to change in you. Come on, did you hear what I just said? We're constantly saying, it's your fault. It's your fault that I'm bothered. It's your fault that I'm offended. But we need to turn that thing and say, what is it that's causing me to be offended? Because it's not up to you to get everybody else fixed. It's up to you to get you fixed. Amen. All right, so he decided what he would do was uh, he was going to just let it go. And he's going to let go of the need to be free from this correction and refuse to be offended by his wife when he was driving. He began to actually affirm her, thanking her for her input, which was very painful for him to do when he first started doing this. But he did. A few months passed. He had let go of the entire situation, actually got to the place to where it just didn't bother him anymore. An interesting thing happened a few months later. One day his wife looked at him and said, John, you know, I realized that I've been directing your driving all of these years. And it goes back to my childhood when I was the older of my siblings. It was my job to tell all of my brothers and sisters what to do. And I realized that you don't need me to do that. Please forgive me. I'm sorry for doing that. The man nearly fell out of his seat, you know? And whenever we work closely with people, whether it's at home or on the job or just out in the community, remember small offenses can become the source of great conflict. Resentment and irritability soon will follow. And God allows these situations to arise in our lives to develop character qualities within ourselves. He uses individuals in our lives, listen, to accomplish his goals of making us more Christ-like. Think about that. So the next time you complain or resist a habit or action from someone close to you that bothers you, ask God if it could be that there's something he wants to develop in you. I want to suggest to you that it does require humility to do that. Because in many cases, we are really right and they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. But God expects us to work on our own hearts and pray for the others. Amen? You see, pride is the root of the need to change another person. And the wisdom of God gives us patience to let go of little offenses. And this is where spiritual maturity is seen in the day-to-day -day activities of life. Is there someone close to you who has some habit that really bugs you, that you want to change? Give up that desire to the Lord. Who knows? He may even change it after you let go of even, you know, the change you won't even need. So, I mean, the, the person will change. It may even happen. It may not happen. It's just up to you to keep your heart right. Amen? Amen. With every head bowed, every eye closed for just a moment, if I can have the musicians back. It's important that we turn over our offenses to God. Nobody looking around with your eyes closed for just a moment. How many of y'all can say, Pastor, I do have a few things, situations, and people that I think about these offenses sometimes that bother me. I try to forgive, but I still have a bad feeling when I think about it. If that's you, would you just be honest enough to raise your hand? I'm not going to call you up front or anything or embarrass you. If that's you, just go ahead and raise your hand and slip it up and put it back down. I see hands around. That's okay. God wants us to be, first of all, honest with ourselves because the only way to solve or to change 
situations is to admit that the problem exists. Right now, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move all over this crowd right now, every one of us. And Lord, minister to us regarding us harboring offenses. Today, Lord, we want to give them to you. Lay them at your feet and totally forgive people. And Lord, where those of us may have forgiven to the best of our ability, and we still feel the little jab, the little twist in that spirit, the little reminder, the things that cause us to feel bad emotionally when we think about the past situation. Lord, we want to be healed of those wounds. We want those emotions, those negative emotions to be healed to the point that when the memory of that situation or that person comes up, we don't feel those intense emotions anymore. Right now in the name of Jesus, I release healing over you to be healed of those things and just let it go. Everybody here say, Lord, I choose to just let it go. The things that have hurt me, the people who have offended me, and they shouldn't have done it. I let it go in Jesus' name. I choose to be free instead of bondage. I choose joy over sadness. I choose love over judgment. And I release myself by your spirit of these past offenses. In Jesus' name, amen.